Hey, Jim here. Welcome back. Today's topic, if you are thinking about backplate and wing in the future, today's short discussion is about choosing the material of your plate. Basically, there are two camps, stainless steel and aluminum, and today we're going to talk why you would choose one of those. Stay tuned. The secret of steel has always carried with it a mystery. You must learn its riddle, Conan. These two plates, the main difference, obviously, is the weight. They're both in salt water. They're both roughly equally as rust resistant. You can get aluminum in some, some pretty sexy anodized colors these days. Steel, not so much. Uh, there are some other plates out there. I've seen uh, brass. That would be really cool. I would go for a brass plate because that's really nautical. And I've seen one guy selling brass plates. There's also titanium. It's really expensive. I don't know. Same benefits as, as aluminum. And also Halcyon and maybe some other places, carbon fiber plates. Very sexy. Halcyon has that, that blue carbon fiber plate out. It's very, very sexy. Very bling. I mean, yeah, woof. I, yeah, I dig it. If you look on, on a, a webpage, what you'll see is the stainless steel is going to weigh in at about five and a half to six pounds. Usually more like five and a half, but they figure, you know, you'll have a light STA single tank adapter or, you know, all your D-rings and all that usually adds up to about six pounds, about three kilos. Aluminum is about a third of that. So it's about, it's going to be about a kilo, just about a couple pounds with its STA and stuff like that. So the concern is folks thinking about, ah, I'm a traveling diver. Or if you're a really, really lightweight person, like when my sons, when my sons first started diving, so they're not going to need a lot of weight. The advantage of a heavier plate is taking weight off your belt is the advantage of a heavier plate of any kind. In fact, there are guys out there, I, I haven't looked up their websites recently, but there used to be guys out there making heavier plates for folks that would dive, for example, Pacific Northwest all the time, and they want to take as much weight as possible off their belt. Because if you're like me, you hate a weight belt. And there are lots of reasons to hate a weight belt, but the main reason is it's putting weight in kind of an inconvenient location, right? Because you're gonna have another belt down there from your, your back plate and your wing or your BC, and it's not the best place to have weight for your balance, so it's just not a great place, and who wants a weight belt? Not me. So what I'm always trying to do when I have my configuration is I'm trying to think and avoid a weight belt, and I never use a weight belt, and I dive dry a lot. So for me, because I don't travel a lot anymore, but even when I did, stainless, because what is it? It's an extra two kilograms uh, compared to the aluminum, and most times if I travel, it's that two kilograms is not gonna put me over the limit, and it's two kilograms that I cannot have on my belt, and, it's a nicer balance of those two kilograms. So those two kilograms were Scuba Steve. Alrighty, so here's here's Scuba Steve. And so those those two kilos, I tell you, they make a difference for your trim. They make a difference. If you, if you see, have a look at my, my trim video. I mean, I've, I've experimented with moving a couple kilograms up and down your body. It really can make a difference between that perfectly relaxed, effortless trim for most of your dive, or, you know, gosh, my legs are heavy. Oh, gosh, my legs are heavy. Wow, I really have to work to keep, oh, I really have to work. And that's gonna change through your whole dive. So for an aluminum tank at the end, it's gonna get floaty, it's gonna help your legs up, or, you know, it might hurt you if you're already heavy here. You know, steel tank is gonna have a different dynamic. Your mileage may vary. But for me, I'm going to favor wanting to have the weight up here if possible. So the steel plate is going to have couple kilos I can take off my belt and it's gonna put that weight where I want it for me and then keeping with the theme of not having a weight belt there are other ways as well so there's the heavy STA the heavy single tank adapter which is another three kilograms I haven't seen a lot of people using those I'm am I the only guy who, who buys those uh, there there are three kilograms of lead so it's a it's an, a single tank adapter that has a channel and it's filled with lead and you just pop it on there. That's another three kilos. And then on my rig, I have these excess scuba pockets. The new versions will hold two two kilogram weights on each side. So now I can have, let's see, two, four, six, eight. So I can have eight kilograms in my pockets and then my plate and my rig is another three kilograms. So I'm eight, nine, 10, 11. And then I am the heavy STA. So 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm four, up to 14 kilograms 
without a weight belt. Personally, when would I dive that? I would dive that if I were in my dry suit and had an aluminum tank and maybe gained some weight that winter. <laughs> Also, you know, as a dive leader, sometimes I have to carry extra weight because I'm not sure about other people I'm with, so I'll have some weight that I can hand off if I need to. Why would you choose an aluminum plate? People who would choose an aluminum plate, I mean, if you're a light person. For example, when my sons were young, their first plates were aluminum plates. If they didn't, you know, in Japan, usually we're diving with steel tanks, so that was more than enough weight for them, just that steel tank was probably enough to send them right to the bottom at 10 years old. For them, an aluminum plate was the way to go. And that, that was perfectly adequate, for, gosh, for maybe a half, a half a dozen years or something. Uh, other small, small framed divers, uh, thin divers who are not going, especially diving steel tanks, and who are not going to need a lot of weight, then there's no net advantage and possibly a disadvantage to having a steel plate because you would be too Heavy. If you're a traveling diver and it's really going to put you on the edge, if you're always a little bit overweight or you're flying a very strict carrier, yeah, I guess if, if saving that, that two kilos would, would be a net advantage to you, sure. For me, it's always going to be stainless steel because I'm not traveling that much and when I do, the carriers that I use are generally not that picky about the weight and I like having that two kilos off of my belt and in a position that's going to help me trim-wise. So I'm always going to opt for the stainless option. And aluminum is going to benefit people who have a very strict travel policy, who do not need that extra weight. Maybe they're a lighter diver. Maybe they don't have a lot of body fat. Maybe they're very thin. Maybe they're, they're not diving uh, aluminum tanks. They're more diving heavier tanks, heavier steel tanks. Aluminum would be a really good option. Alrighty, I hope that gave you some insights. Pound the like if you're inclined to. Subscribe if you haven't yet, if this is helping you out. Glad to have you along on the channel. And I will see you on the beach. The rebel of steel. Yes. You know what it is, don't you, boy? What is steel compared to the hand that wields it? Look at the strength of your body, the desire in your heart. I gave you this. Such a waste. So those, holy cow, I'm just realizing I've got Scuba Steve backwards, I think. Is this, is Scuba Steve backwards here? I don't, where's his chest? I don't even know what's, what's a chest? I don't get it. All right, I don't know. I don't know which way Scuba Steve is supposed to be. I'm sorry, Scuba Steve.